Hello and welcome to another update. In this one, I'll be covering the latest developments throughout the front line, starting out in the direction of Robotina, where here the Ukrainian forces continue their offensive operations in the direction of Novokopivka to the southeast of that location and in the direction of Verbova. As for the direction of Verbova, the Ukrainian forces have been detected to have launched an armored convoy across the anti-tank ditches here to the west of Webove. The armored convoy consisted of multiple infantry fighting vehicles but no tanks and these infantry fighting vehicles reached the outskirts of the trenches here in the central part where the Ukrainian forces have managed to gather some positions and then fighting took place between the Ukrainian forces and the Russian forces in this area. There's been no reports of these Ukrainian vehicles making it back from this assault there has been some videos of these vehicles being shelled in this part of the front line so this development is actually very significant because it means that the ukrainian forces have now been able to pass through the first defensive line the anti-tank ditches and the dragon teeth with the armored vehicles this means it's only a matter of time before we see a fully fledged armored assault on Verbova, and with such a strength they may be able to capture the village and push onwards so this major breakthrough that Zelensky has been talking about and that Budanov have been talking about uh, may actually come through this direction it's in the direction of Verbova. however so far we're not seeing any evidence of a major buildup. up there's been some minor buildups of infantry fighting vehicles and armored vehicles in general but most of these seem to be getting hit in the back line by russian artillery and airstrikes as we've seen multiple videos of but what we see is that there is developments in this front there is advances by the ukrainian forces and they now have managed to use their armored vehicles across the anti-tank ditch so in this part of the front line we see that the ukrainian forces continuously advance there's been no counterattacks by the russian forces in recent days this would indicate that the ukrainian forces have fully regained the initiative they're the ones who are controlling as to what happens when and where and we see that their main focus seems to be to the south of robotina and to the east of robotina in the direction of verbova so the fighting is mainly taking place here. This is where the majority of the fighting is taking place. But if we take a look at the Remelsky Ledge area, we see that the Russian forces have here managed to counterattack and have managed to regain their positions to the south of the river line, here to the north of Novomayorsky, fully recapturing the village and allowing them to have some sort of buffer zone between the Russian and Ukrainian forces. This is most likely the Ukrainian forces deciding that they stopped this fighting here. It was most likely a distraction, as I said at the very start of it, that this is just to redirect Russian forces away from the Robotina direction as the Ukrainian forces prepare for their main push in that direction. As for the Bakhmut front, we see here that the fighting continues in a very heavy manner as the Russian forces and Ukrainian forces clash to the east and to the north of Klishchivka. The finding here is very intense as the Russian forces refuse to give up on the village despite the Ukrainian full capture of it. They managed to re-enter yesterday with the help of Wagner operatives. But we also see finding in the eastern parts of the hills to the east of Klishivka. And as was reported by Russian forces, the Ukrainian forces have every advantage in this direction. So the fighting for them is very tough. As for the Ukrainian perspective, they claim that they are seeing major success in this direction. So they both add up to the Ukrainians having the advantage here. But there has been some rotations on the Russian forces, both in the direction of Bakhmut and generally in the northern parts of the front. This indicates that the Russian forces are preparing for some sort of counterattack as they as I've mentioned multiple times in previous videos from months ago, that Klishivka is the main village with the Ukrainian capture of Klishivka and Andreevka. They essentially are able to move their front many kilometers to the east and are threatening the whole southern flank of Bakhmut. However, it doesn't seem that the Ukrainian forces are building up large concentrations of armored vehicles in this direction, as their main focus is in the direction of Robotina. 
This is why I don't expect the Ukrainians to make any major breakthrough in this direction because if they were to, they would need to build up a large contingent of Ukrainian troops as well as armored vehicles. But so far we are only seeing large concentrations of infantry and artillery in this direction which is why we're seeing this slow and steady advance because the Ukrainians are largely using infantry and artillery to bombard the Russian positions until they are forced to retreat and then they move in bit by bit. This is how they have times where they advance and times where they don't advance. The times where they advance are followed after a large section where they bombard Russian positions where they don't advance. They just focus on destroying the Russian fortifications and positions within these locations like in the Rivka and Klishivka. This is why when the Russian side says these two villages don't exi exist except by name, it is because the areas are completely destroyed as we saw with the picture of Andrivka, completely wiped out of the map of the world. And these locations are just impossible to defend. So when the Russians withdraw from these positions because they cannot defend it any further, then the Ukrainian forces are able to capture it easily in comparison to if they didn't do that first. So this is actually the Russian strategy. And they are not just using the Russian strategy, they are also using the Wagner strategy, which is focused around the railways. So this Wagner strategy that I'm referring to is one that the Wagner forces used to do their own operations around Bakhmut. The whole focus of it is to focus around fighting in the times where the ground is muddy and there's no armored assaults, no armored vehicles, no tanks and so on to support. As the Wagner forces heavily relied on infantry and artillery to do their advances and not armored assaults. So what we're seeing is that the Ukrainian forces have nearly the same composition and as such they're using the same strategies because it has been proven to work. So the way this strategy functions based on my observations is that the Wagner forces look for areas where there is heavy cover, similar to the canal areas where there's been major forest lines, as well as the fortifications next to them where they can take cover. Then there is the railways which are at low elevation covered by forests on both sides, which gives them um, mtol cover for operations so these two are their focuses so we've seen the ukrainian forces moving down south through the canal line by the forest lines and then move eastwards from those positions towards klishivka towards andrivka and moving down by the forest patches we have also seen them move south of ivanivska straight towards klishivka to capture the fortifications to the north of the village when they held these positions with forest patches and fortifications where they could hold their positions and have cover, they then started the bombardment part of the strategy where they completely obliterated the villages of Klishivka and Derivka until they barely existed on the map. And then is when the Ukrainian forces stormed these villages, taking it bit by bit, and in a matter of a week they captured the village. This is exactly how the Wagner troops were fighting to the north and to the south of Bakhmut and within Bakhmut itself throughout the whole Bakhmut campaign. And this is how the Ukrainian forces have allowed the forces in the south to essentially hug all the armored vehicles. The vast majority of the armored vehicles in the Ukrainian possession is in the south in the direction of Robotine, in the direction of the Saporizhia and Remelsky ledge areas. The reason for this is because the Ukrainian forces by Bakhmut have adapted the Wagner tactics, which doesn't require armored vehicles and assault vehicles, tanks and so on, because they are focusing on these things that gives infantry advantages, advancing towards them. Of course, it is not completely without armored support, they do have some and this is how they're able to pass through and capture these fortifications because the Ukrainian forces advance through the fortified areas, advance through the forest patches. And then when they reach these fortified positions, that is when they use their armored vehicles, they use their tanks and so on to capture these positions. And then they start the infantry operations again. So the armored vehicles are only used when they are necessary. The rest of the time, it's only infantry fighting through with the support of artillery. 
And if we move further north in the direction of Luhansk, we also see the same strategy here in the direction of Sinkivka. This has been the same strategy that the Russian forces are using in this direction. Here in the direction of Sinkivka itself, we see that the Russian forces cut off the supply route to the east of Sinkivka and took the first lines patches areas to the north of Sinkivka. This was all to cut off the supply and get a direct overview over Sinkivka, allowing them to completely demolish the village. But instead of moving into it, like the Ukrainian and Wagner forces used to do, they are just standing outside of it. Now that it doesn't exist, there's no reason for them to hold it. They're just pushing through the first patches, first lines, first areas here to the west of Sinkivka, trying to demolish this area, after which they'll advance further and further southwards. We have seen some fighting reaching Petropavlivka from the northeastern area, this is the Russian forces returning to Russian strategies. And that is going to be all for this update. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.